Hello everyone and welcome to another really awesome game that was played in 1977 uh, and it was played via a telex machine. Now, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the telex machine as you are probably probably younger to know what it is, uh, this is a telex machine and I'm just going to read a, a short uh, description of it uh, for, from Wikipedia so you understand what it is. So basically, uh, it's uh, uh, the Telex network was a customer-to-customer -customer switched network of teleprinters similar to a telephone network, uh, using telegraph-grade connect uh, connecting circuits for two-way text-based messages. Telex was a major method uh, of sending written messages electronically between businesses in the post-World War II period, and its usage went into decline as the fax machine grew in popularity in the 1980s. So this is the... Uh, the technology that was used uh, to, to play out this game so i don't think there was a time format involved uh, it was probably when <clears throat> when you receive a move then you at some point reply with a move maybe maybe you had a like a one day uh, to, to reply with a move or maybe it was some sort of a time control we, we have no uh, information on that but it's a really cool game so i do hope you guys are going to enjoy it like i said it was played in 1977 and uh, both of them uh, are younger than they are in this uh, photo here. Uh, Kasparov was 14 when this game was played and Guy West was 19, but this is the only photo I could find. So I'm using this one and uh, today uh, Guy West is an international master and also a former Australian champion. Uh, I don't know his uh, his skill level at the time the game was played, but like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful game, so let's check it out. Uh, so Kasparov had the white pieces and he opened with E4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have c5, so the Sicilian defense is on the board. We have knight f3 and now knight to f6. Usually you'll see something like uh, knight c6, d6, e6, but knight to f6 is also very, very playable. You attack the e4 pawn, uh, but it's not uh, all that popular today. We have knight c3 defending the e4 and now e6. And now Kasparov opens up the position like you would uh, against a normal Sicilian with the d4. So, captures, captures, and now comes bishop to b4, the so-called pin variation, as you are uh, threatening to pick up the pawn here as the knight is pinned. So here Kasparov advances his pawn to e5, challenging the knight here, and now knight to d5, with threats of uh, just winning material here. So Kasparov needs to defend on c3, uh, we have bishop to d2, now the knight is nicely defended twice, and here uh, west uh, trades. We have knight captures and b captures, of course Kasparov not interested in trading the dark square bishops as well uh, as uh, he's saying my next move is queen to g4 probably I'm gonna uh, try and do some damage there so you could uh, retreat your bishop to, to c5 you could retreat it to e7 to f8 uh, you know almost like if, if it was a, an Evans gambit bishop but it's not all that impressive c5 is possible but you always uh, you, you always uh, are going to have problems with this queen to g4 bishop to e7 is no different queen g4 and it's not all that clear what you're going to do because if castle is then just bishop h6 is uh almost winning yeah not not much for you to do there uh there's the threat of checkmate you have to give up the rook here white could even continue attacking with h4 h5 just a very very difficult position for black to play so here uh, if you if you look at this position bishop back to f8 was played and now uh kasparov just plays bishop to d3 so he, he continues development his uh, bishop is very nicely attacking the king side he's ready to castle the rook has a nice semi-open b file so his position is uh, really awesome whereas black uh, still needs to start developing his pieces and if you put this game to an engine, the engine will say, yeah, white is slightly better. Uh, but from a human's perspective, uh, you are down in development so much. And even even if this is somehow playable, if you like know all the all the lines, it's very, very difficult from a, from a human standpoint. And uh, especially for 1977, where, you know, the development was everything. So here, d6 was played, challenging that pawn. And now Kasparov defends with queen to e2. And uh, it is as of this move that this position has never been reached again. So we're only on move 10, uh, but the game doesn't last for much longer. Uh, because like we said, uh, black uh, has none of the pieces developed. And now he should either capture the pawn, he should start developing with bishop to e7, maybe try and castle there, knight to, not there, but knight to c6 is also a possibility. However, he played knight to d7. And this really allows Kasparov to, to execute a beautiful combination. Uh, specifically because of the knight at d7 move. So feel free to pause the video and to win this game for Kasparov uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, uh, you know, just uh, brilliantly sacrificing your pieces. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it's Knight Captures on E6. And here there is just no reply uh, for from Black uh, because whatever you do, it's just bad. The queen is under attack and you have to do something about that. Uh, so what can you do? Uh, well, let's try. Well, let's first try capturing the knight. If we just capture the knight, can we do that? Not really, because of this queen to h6, uh, queen to h5 check, and the bishop covering g6 uh, is extremely important here because you don't have a good move here. If king e7, just bishop to g5 check, and there is not much you can do. Knight f6, you're gonna go captures, captures, and now this incredible bishop captures on f6. Uh, because, well, after king captures queen h4 and the king cannot uh, go back to defend the queen. You have to move the king and then white just wins the queen, uh, as, of course, the, the king is not a knight. So after the king moves, just captures and it's game over. Another thing, after f captures on e6 and queen h5 check, you don't have to, of course, move the king. You could block with g6, but then just white continues happily sacrificing bishop captures, h captures and captures, and that's just it. We reach a very similar position. Bishop g5 check, and now it's all over. Knight f6 check, queen captures, and the queen will now fall uh, due to this double attack that will happen here. King d7 captures, and the king is getting checkmated very soon. So, uh, obviously, capturing the knight is a no-go. So, what can we do? We could move the queen, let's say queen to b6, or maybe queen to h4 even. Uh, but queen to h4 loses terribly to bishop to g5. And now, you either lose the queen, or you have to move the queen somewhere, and there are no good squares. For example, queen to a4 is the only square possible, but then just knight to c7 is checkmate, as the king is in check, and this bishop nicely covers this entire diagonal. So uh, these two options uh, are not happening. So captures and queen to h4, not possible. So here, uh, guy west played uh, queen to b6, uh, but it's not much better. So even though uh, you probably know what Kasparov played here, uh, for those of you who don't, feel free to pause the video once again and win the game for Kasparov in the e uh, simplest possible way uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on continuing to happily sacrifice pieces. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to c7 check. Uh, and after this knight to c7 check, on move 12, Guy West resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, whatever you do, you just lose terribly uh, because if the if the knight is captured, then just, uh, well, e captures on d6 delivers check and you will lose the queen on c7. So that's, of course, not a possibility. Another thing, after knight to c7, uh, you could move the king, let's say king to somewhere, king to d, uh, d, d8, but then just knight captures on a8 and you've, lo you've, lost, a, uh, <laughs> you've lost a rook. Not much you can do here. Uh, there, there's no good way for even trying to recapture the knight. Uh, and, uh, well, black's uh, entire position is just busted. You still have no development. The king uh, has lost castling privileges. It will be a, a, a very one-sided game. And uh, lastly, but not leastly, after knight to c7 check, you could go king to e7, but that just runs into a discovery as the queen and king occupy the e-file, so just captures on d6, and we have a very quick checkmate. King captures, bishop to f4 check, the king has very few squares to go to, king to c5, and now queen to e3 with check. King c6 and bishop to e4 check now ends the game, as there are no more squares for the, uh, for the black king, the knight covers the b5 square. <clears throat> And uh, and that's it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, only eleven moves. Uh, sorry, only twelve moves. Knight to c7 check is the twelfth move where Guy West resigned, and this beautiful, beautiful game was accomplished uh, via a telex machine. Let's not forget. And for those of you who are older subscribers to the channel, you might remember uh, me showing this game. I've showed it some, I believe, four years ago. But back then, we didn't have the photos of the players. We didn't have any additional knowledge about the telex machine and such so i do hope you enjoyed this uh this remake and of course uh, every remake we make of older videos is now at 60 frames per second uh so yeah uh that's uh the game i do hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, mystery person jesse B uh, burstrim uh, daniel harbor uh, david kimura and uh, michelle alexandra Deller for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. And uh, 
a very short announcement uh, most likely like 95 percent likely we will have a, a live stream today there's going to be a tournament i'm not saying what kind of tournament is going to be uh, maybe it's going to be an Evans Gambit exclusive tournament to see how you guys, uh, you know, uh, soaked in all that extra Evans Gambit knowledge, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so if, if I uh, make such a tournament, I will send you guys an invite via via some sort of, uh, not via Telex, but uh, I'm, I'm probably going to use YouTube. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all and uh, I will see you soon.